Thank you for coming. Um, I'm Jose. I will, I'm an open source engineer at Alpha Security. Uh, this talk was created with Ikai. Uh, he runs the open source team at Aqua. But today I'll be presenting by myself. Just some context. Like a couple of years ago, some very meaningful attacks opened like everyone's eyes for supply chain security, right? Uh, the Kodakov attack, for example, uh, an attacker was able to modify their bash script, uh, the installer. So whenever you were installing Kodakov, this would collect like sensitive information and send you a remote IP, right? So if you were using GitHub Actions, for example, when you were installing the Kodakov Actions, it would collect your GitHub token and send to this remote IP. Um, like all others, uh, we also want to like explore a solution for this and we start a POC for GitHub Actions specifically. But our perspective, we're like runtime security, right? We, we want to try to bring the world of runtime security to attempt to fix this problem. Uh, and that, that's what, what I want to talk to you like in this talk, right? The POC we did, the attempts we, we did were implemented, and a few things we learned along the way. Uh, why runtime security? Because that's what we do, right? I work on the Tracy project. It's an open source project for runtime security and forensics. Tracy will use eBPF to collect events on your kernel, over 500 of those events, right? Like, so it's a lot of events. And those events can be as simple as a syscall. So you can say, I want to know whenever the right syscall happens the host, or I want to know if a specific process is doing a right syscall. Right? But there are also like complex events, which we call like signature events, right? They, those complex events, the, the idea that they detect malicious activity. So you can ask Tracy to trigger an event if a file is attack is happening on the host or a reverse shell, right? Uh, when you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And Tracy's are hammer. So that, that's what we want to try to use to fix this problem with supply chain. Uh, the first solution we attempt was pretty basic. We got Tracy the way it was with its signature events. We brought, we create a GitHub action, right? We add a trace to it. So whenever someone would use it, Tracy would boot in the background and see if any malicious activity was happening. Um, it was actually like good to see this working because we didn't know at first if we would be able to run a BPF in GitHub actions. And it did work, uh, was a good first step, but first lesson comes uh, right after the, the release of this, this POC, right? Which is production time is different than build time, right? There, uh, th there are different ideas there. And specifically at the time, Trace had like a, a set of signatures very specific for production. So for example, uh, the uh, like guaranteeing you have a immutable infrastructure. In production, you don't create artifacts. You already have your container image, your binary, right? You just execute them. So if you're running um, a container and some binary is downloaded from the outside, this is a suspicious activity, right? It's good to have an event about it. But when you're in building time, actually it's the opposite. You are creating your artifacts, right? You are probably installing like dependency auxiliary tools to help you create your artifacts. So you have your compiler, maybe curl to do some downloading, maybe JQ, right? So uh, it's not the same thing, right? So what, what we try to do is like go over the signatures we have and see what does make sense for production and what does make sense for build time. And because like in production, making, uh, we don't want to make assumptions, for example. It does not matter if you're running a binary built by Go or Rust in production. We don't care, right? The events are collected from the, from the kernel, and that's how we would see if it's a file as attack or not, right? But in build time, maybe we could do the assumption when you're running Go that your Go mod should not change. So we can create an event for that. Uh, the Go mod can change in development time, but in build time it should. So we could create an event for that, right? Uh, and considering this same idea of build time, we can make assumptions. 
we saw that build time is actually kind of predictable, right? You have your steps there. So for example, you say, I will clone my repository. I'm gonna download my dependencies. I'm gonna run my tests, build my binary. So that, that's kind of flow there, right? So considering this uh, idea, this specific assumption that build time is not production, we thought that what if instead of using trace to see the malicious activity, we use trace to actually see the good activities, right? The normal behavior, this flow. And then we try to enforce it every time, right? So if you have a baseline, whenever the baseline is diverged, means something changed, we'll let you know about it, right? In other words, we start to do a profile and that's our second attempt here, right? We book the action in two, so we have a start and stop. Well, whatever is in between there will be profiled execution. We want to track what is executed in between those, uh, those actions. Uh, and uh, another lesson learned is that creating a profile of good data is very hard, right? It's very hard. Why? Because there's a lot of volatile information. Uh, for example, arguments, right? Arguments, sometimes they don't change, but if you're using a temp temporary directory, it will change, right? And the next run, almost certainly will be different. Uh, process ID, same thing. If you're using like a process ID in the next run, so the, the profile is very unstable with arguments, right? Uh, so we, we, we try to balance like what information to have in the profile, right, about the executions that was good enough, right, to inform you about your baseline uh, without making it stable. So we decided to go on the first attempt, right, this second attempt with the binary path, the binary hash, and how many times it was executed. Of course, like now, it, it's, I know it doesn't make sense, right? We did it, but it doesn't make sense. Why? Because knowing that curl was executed is good, but curl to a bad IP and curl to GitHub is very different, right? So the arguments are indeed very important here. We cannot ignore them, right? If we have, want to have like a profile of the good actions. Uh, other things that we saw as well, profiling executions is very limited. It leaves a lot of things not answered. For example, with the executions only, we don't know if this build is hermetic, right? Is the network activity happening while you're building your, your artifact? Uh, with the executions only, we don't know that. Also, we don't know if any file was modified, right? So uh, th there's things we would like to answer, the good things, and just executions is too little. And another idea that also, like, uh, from this first attempt to the second, one we were doing just signatures and the other just profile. And then we thought, okay, profile is a good idea. We like it, it's a good concept, but signatures also have a role, right? We also want to look about any bad activity that might be happening. So this brings us for our third attempt, right? Where we're trying to like fix this, those things that we learned. Uh, first, we brought back the signatures to identify any malicious activity that might be going in the host. Second, we extend our profiles. Now we look for executions, files modified, and network activity, okay? And this kind of creates the feeling of like deny allow list, right? So the bad stuff is on the deny, deny list, which the signatures events can identify, and the good stuff is on the profile, right? Tracy comes with like a bunch of those signature events by default, right? It's shipped with Tracy. And also, if you want to create your own, it's possible, right? Uh, the Aqua Research team adds their own there, so it's always evolving, but you also can evolve that library if you want to. And that's the demo I want to do for you real quick here. So, Just some context, okay? I have a Golang project. Uh, I create a branch here. And in this branch, I'm introducing a GitHub uh, workflow, okay? So, okay, it's a Golang project, some files. We have the starting action for trace, the stop action, right? The things in between we're gonna trace. 
we're like running our tests, building our binary, and here like I want to keep in mind this upload fake action, right? Uh, it, it, something will happen, like for now, just note it, okay? So we're gonna go back to the terminal and push this branch to GitHub so we can create our PR. Pushing, let's go to the GitHub, create our PR. All right, and now they are the task of waiting for the PR to run, right? I really try to use like my skills editing this video, okay, here, okay, so uh, it's faster. It's not fast, that fast in real life, uh, let me warn you guys. So wait for it to run. And it fails, right? Why it fails? Because it's the first time we are running, right? So we don't have a uh, baseline yet. It did create a PR, and this PR will have the three profiles I meant before. We see there's no activity for DNS. We see the executions that we were able to trace, right? What your pipeline did, what your workflow did. And we also see that two files were changed. So this is our baseline, and we're gonna merge it, okay? Merging. All right, we, now we need to update our PR, right, with this baseline, so we're gonna go to main, check out and update the branch. All right, and going to the PR, we're gonna rebase from main and push it. Rebasing and push to update the PR. Again, this will start the workflow. Waiting for it to start. Okay, and should be now. Yeah, okay. So it's starting, it's running there, right? And it generates a new profile and it compares to the baseline. And before we failed, because we didn't have, now we have the baseline, so it passed, right? We, we, the build this time did exactly the same thing that it did before, right? All right, we're gonna merge our PR, adding our workflow there. And now like pretend that some time has passed, we are still working on the project and we're gonna create a new feature, right? So we are updating our main with the latest code. We're gonna create a branch for the new feature. Okay, all nice. Here just to demonstrate I'm gonna do an empty commit, okay? Like it doesn't need to actually be any code, so just an empty commit. So we trigger the workflow again. But before pushing, we, we're gonna, remember that fake upload action, we're gonna hijack it, right? Pretend someone actually changed that code to do some malicious activity. So we're gonna go there, change to a branch that has the malicious code, create a new tag, right, with that code. So we recreate the tag 010, and we have two, push it and update it on GitHub. So we're gonna push it. Awesome, this will update there. So like the, the, the point here is like to think that a supply chain attack like could cover something, uh, the hijack could have happened without no one knowing, right? You, you, you think that things are okay. Uh, your code, you test, you scan, you validate and things are good, but like maybe one of the, your dependents, right? The, the, class supply chain attack was hijacked and you don't know about it. So we push it. And let's create a PR. Okay, again, we need to wait for the workflow to start. So give it like a, a couple seconds. It starts, and this time it should fail, right? And, and, and we're gonna note a couple things. So the first thing, right, you see it wrote a comment there, it's still running, and it should fail now. It also created a PR, we see that it was linked there, so it failed. Okay, so what, what has in the comment? This comment is like uh, how we found to say that, like how to inform you about the malicious activity, right? So there was a signature event that identified someone tried to contact, contact a crypto mining domain, right? So it added there. There are the information about the event, right? What's the process ID, what's the context, everything. Uh, 
and also it creates a profile because now our baseline diverge, right? And if we see the profile, what we see there? First, uh, the DNS that was accessed, right, is a crypto mine DNS. The command that was executed, here just to simulate we're using DIG, so uh, the command that was executed, and also that our main goal was changed, right? Our file in our workspace, our code, now is different, so it, it, this should be alarming, right? So that, that's the idea of the profiling, right? Um, and that, that's the demo. And now like, I would like to dig a little deep in each of those sections, right, about the executions, because like, we ca before we started with the executions, then we said, oh, we care about other things, executions, network activity, file act system activity, right? So let's start first with the executions. So the concept of a deny list and allow list. In the deny list, we have the signatures, the event signatures. Uh, for example, we have the code injection event. The code injection will see, like it will trigger every time a process is trying to inject code into another process. The LD preload event, it will trigger every time someone is using the LD preload variable to load a library before your process, right? And for the good part, uh, we extend the, the profile now. We, before we just had binary path, binary hash. Now we have user ID, arguments, and environment variable, right? Like, remember that arguments made the profile unstable? Yeah, so because of this, so we can actually allow the profile to, to be consistent run to run, we had to add an ignore system, right? So if there's one common that is using a temp deer, we need to add like that deer to the uh, ignore system so we don't record it in the profile. This happens with the git checkout, right? So when you're checking out your code, it will create several like temporary directories and that's something we could add to the ignore rules. Another thing is the environment variable, right? Uh, we also can ignore some of them, for example, the GitHub token, right? And by default, it's disabled, right? And it's disabled so people are cautious about it. The code cob attack, it was collecting this information, right? And as we are tracking it from the kernel, we have all the information of what's going on, right? And we are recording it. If the environments variable are enabled, if environments variable are enabled by default, we're gonna create the pull request with our secrets variable there, right? So to be cautious, it's disabled, so we need to think a little more on how to do it. And the next thing is, how do we know what is getting executed, right? How do we ask Tracy to collect this information for us? I think like the, the first idea that comes to mind is a syscall, right? So whenever you execute something, it's through the execve syscall, right? You give a path name, it executes that binary, right? Uh, but there are a couple problems with it. First, the execve syscall, it's relative to the directory. So if you're inside a directory and you execute something, the path name that is traced on that syscall is relative, and we need the canonical path, right? We actually need to know the canonical path. Like, just the relative path is too little information. And without the canonical path, for example, how can we have the, the hash of the binary that was executed, right? Um, another problem, right? When you invoke a syscall, you're actually asking the, the kernel to do something, right? You, you're saying for it, okay, like, do this for me, execute this binary for me. It's not the actual execution, right? So it's susceptible to a type of attack that uh, one thread can say, hey, execute this binary for me. And before the kernel actually start to execute it, in a race condition, another thread changed the parameter, right? So Tracy, when he see the syscall, actually he see the, the previous parameter, which was a pointer, and he, did, he doesn't see the change. So because of this type of attack, time of check, time of use, we prefer to use a Tracy point. So Tracy not only can like collect the syscalls for us, but also LSM hooks, trace points, K probe, and those signatures events that we built, and you could also build if you want. Next one, file modified. Same idea, we have the deny list and the allow list. For the deny list, for example, uh, we're checking if the sudo file of the host was changed. And for the allow list, we're checking what file path changed, but specifically in our workspace. Because GitHub gives us a VM, right? And 
We don't want to know like everything that has changed the whole host. We care more about our pipeline, right? About the workspace that we are building our artifact, right? Uh, and how to collect events for it. Uh, this is also a cool one because we can think the right syscall, right? But the right syscall, because in Linux everything is a, is a file, uh, it receives a file descriptor. And this file descriptor could be not a file, it could be a socket, could be something else. And also the right uh, syscall is executed a lot in Linux, right? So we do a trick here of instead of like tracing the actual action, we trace the intention to write. So what, what, what needs to happen for someone to write in a file? You need to open that file with the right permission. And that's what we trace here. Uh, Tracy doesn't have this event, so we had to create it, right? And I'm gonna show you in a bit how we did it. For the network activity, again, uh, deny and allow. Uh, here we broke, like, we, we consider like the access direct to a bare IP because bare IPs, they are like volatile, right? So having the profile, the profile will never be stable, right? So we kind of treat it like the better activity. We'll let you know about that with an event. And in the profile, we are adding the DNS resolution, right? DNS event. Uh, it can also be ignored if you want, right? And how we track it, Trace has a bunch of events for network. They are like higher level events, right? Instead of like worrying about the syscalls and everything, uh, we create a higher level event and they are like protocol aware. So you can say, uh, let me know whenever an HTTP request happens or let me know whenever HTTP response happens. The same for DNS. And that's what we track here. And the last category I want to, to mention is, uh, I like the Tracy action, like this POC that we're implementing because some things that we want to, to do with it kind of was not possible in the first few versions, but like as Tracy is evolving, we are able to improve this POC like every couple of months, right? So as I mentioned, like GitHub, it gave us a VM, right? So there's a lot of things happening and we don't want to trace everything or else the profile is never stable, it's chaotic, right? The only thing we, we care about is what is happening in our workflow. And inspect GitHub, we actually see that like every step of our workflow is executed under the same process tree. And for us, this is great because Tracy can filter easily by process tree. We just say, hey Tracy, collect this evidence by this process tree. It doesn't catch everything because, for example, if you're using Docker to build a machine, whatever command is in your Docker file is important for the profile, right? You want to know that your Docker file did a curl to some place, right? But what we see on the uh, runner tree is actually the execution of a Docker build, right? We don't see the exact commands being executed. So this happens in another process tree. We also say, hey, Tracy, please trace this process tree and that process tree. But something that we couldn't do before and recently we did a feature and now we can, like once we narrowed, we, we couldn't have like the, the, the other eye, right? We were looking with one eye to these, these things, the other right to, to the rest, right? So for example, signatures. The signatures should not be only about the process tree of the Docker build or the workflow, right? It should be about the whole host. We care about anything. Like if someone is doing an SSH connection on this host while your, our building is running, we care about it, right? And with a recent feature of policies, we, we finally were able to implement it. Let, let me show the policy for you. So this is a policy for the runner, right? Uh, basic policy, it has a name, description, default action. The scope here, which is the, the runner, right? Whatever is happening under that process tree and the events we care about. SCAD process exec, net DNS. For the case of the container build, right? Same idea, default action, name, or events in this case are the same. SCAD process exec, net pack DNS. But our scope is different. Here what we are saying is that, okay, you know like that binary, it builds the Docker image. And what we want to do is like follow the children that are created there, right? Because they are the commands executions for the Docker image. So we do a dash follow there. For the signatures, then like the, the new thing I was saying, right? Our scope is now global. For signatures, we care about all those events, but for the whole host. We don't want it just for one process tree or the other. And I mentioned before about the like 
tracing the intention to write, right? Uh, and we had to create an event for that. Like, you can create signatures events in Tracy with either Regal or Golang. Uh, here I'm using Regal. You can see the metadata, the event name is called file write, right? Uh, in the trace select events, we say what we will originate these events. So we say whenever the secu a security file open, which is an LSM hook happens, or, or meaning someone is opening a file, we run our logic here, which is the, the, the regal part about the, the trace match. What is our logic? We check, is this open actually intended to write? If so, we grab the path name and return it, okay? And why we do it? Because now we can use it in a policy. We can do a policy that, for the event, file write that we just created, but then we filter by the workspace, right? We only care about changes happening in our code, right? And that's why we return the path name there, okay? So this is very new to Tracy, uh, uh, and it, it's a, I work on this feature, I'm really happy about it, sorry. Uh, so, uh, and the last thing I wanna mention here is like, while working on the profiles, we thought that uh, Tracy can collect now a lot of information, right? And like, this is good for detecting malicious activity. This was good for the concept of the profile, but it could also be good for other things, right? Thinking like observability here. And uh, very recently, there was a, a predicate for a runtime attestation that was merged in, in Toto. And is it specifically for that? It's kind of the same idea of the uh, the profile, right, it, it's different, but it, it, it's similar. Uh, not sure if anyone used like Tecton here. Tecton has Tecton chains, and whenever you're building an artifact in Tecton, Tecton chains Tracy what you're doing, and then it attests, it says, oh, this artifact was built with those comments, right? And this runtime predicate here, this attestation, has the same idea, but it's more generic. It could be applied for anything, right? You could do it for a script, you could do it for other CI, in our case, GitHub Actions. And that's what we are looking to implementing now because we can use this attestation to help like supplement our salsa attestation or provenance, right, for salsa. And it's still ongoing, but I, I have a POC of it and so uh, the idea is to release it, right? Uh, this is like some of the, the lessons learned that uh, there's a list if anyone get these slides. And thank you, here's like the links if you want to know know more the projects or if you want to chat about it and like give me your perspective i would love to like hear your feedback uh thank you guys really <laughs>